What up, students? It's time to start talking about a little uh, comparative economics. Did you guys realize that before you graduate from uh, the lovely big one in high school, that you'll have to actually take a class in economics? You'll take it your junior or senior year. A uh, guy by the name of Mr. Raleigh teaches right across the hallway, will teach you how to maximize your resources. Very relevant class. So this is a little background for that. There's three essential questions in this presentation. The first one is, what exactly is economics? What are basic, the basic questions in the study of economics? And what are some of the most basic systems in the world when it comes to uh, dealing with these issues? What are, the, what are basic economic systems? But first, we have to talk about what is economics. And you know, a lot of this gets into this concept of wants versus needs. What's a want? What's a need? You know, I want, I want a milkshake right now. <laughs> I don't need a milkshake right now. If I drink too many milkshakes, my love handles will expand and it'll be like, it'll be like an overflowing soda in too small of a glass. I don't need a milkshake. I want one. And boy, I'd really go for a Frosty right now. I like those vanilla Frosties even better than the chocolate ones. Enough, people. This is what economics is. The study of how people make decisions in a world where wants are unlimited, but resources are limited. So in other words, you know, there's not enough to go around. So economics is the study about how people make decisions with scarce resources. It's all about scarcity. Scarcity just means that there's not enough of something. And when it comes to the basic questions, when it comes to economics, um, countries have to decide who are going to make these decisions about scarcity, you know, what, what, what a country is going to produce, what they're going to put their energy towards producing or acquiring, and, and how they're going to do it. So the what, the who, what, and how are the basic questions in economics. And there's some basic economic systems. In other words, there's some basic ways that societies have decided to answer these questions. Now, the first one we're going to deal with is this concept of traditional. Now, this is an odd image to have on an economics lecture. It's from ancient Egypt. And this dude is obviously plowing some field with some hieroglyphics in the background. And his, his little, like, I don't know, kilt or something looks a little white for farm work. I think it'd be dirtier. But here's the thing, man. Traditional economic systems are, are, are old systems, or antiquated systems, or basic systems, or fundamental systems. You can see them throughout history. Um, an economic system where tradition and custom govern economic decisions. Uh, economic activities are usually centered toward family, tribe, or ethnic group. So tradition just means the way things have always been done. And generally what you see in these societies is most people are focused on agriculture. And I'm not talking about large farms like we have here in Delaware County. I'm talking about small plots of land. And most of what you produce, you probably have to turn over to some rich landlord. So, uh, you know, the way that, that they answer those questions are, are, are based on tradition. And, uh, you know, what they produce is are, are primarily agricultural. Uh, products and the way they produce them is the way they've always been done. You, you might think of a third world country. Uh, a country, a, a poor country in Africa would be a traditional economic system. Now, does anybody recognize this symbol here? Uh, this is the hammer and sickle. The hammer and sickle is the uh, traditional uh, symbol of communism. And uh, Another word for communism is a command system. The government or other central authority makes all the economic decisions. And individuals have little, if any, influence over those decisions. Everything is owned by the government. There's no concept of private property. Um, people in command systems look at competition and believe that it brings out the worst in human behavior. And there's, there's reason to point to that. I mean, think about the way parents act at youth sporting events. Um, and, you know, decisions are made, this is important, decisions are made to try to satisfy people's basic needs, not wants. There's not an emphasis on luxury items or consumer demand. 
It's what do people need to survive. And they're going to try to take care of everybody's basic needs. If you go to a communist country, you're not going to see homeless people like you saw last year when you visited Washington, D.C. Uh, everybody will have a job. And, and these countries are generally very strict. And guess what? There's very few of them in the world today. Uh, I'm going to quiz you right now. How many countries classify themselves as communists today? There's only four. What do you think? We'll be like the, uh, like the question on, uh, oh, what's that show? Oh, CNN Student News. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Here they are. You got China, you got Cuba, you got Vietnam, and you have North Korea. Those are the only four command countries left, and most of them are not even pure communism anymore. China certainly isn't. Vietnam certainly isn't. Cuba and North Korea are still hanging on, but <laughs> Cuba's not going to be that way for long, particularly if it starts interacting with the United States. Okay, the next is a market system. Now, a market system, look at this interesting image. You're going to see a lot of these in Mr. Raleigh's class. It's a supply and demand curve. Um, economic decisions in a market economy, another word for that is capitalism, is, uh, are made by individuals uh, operating freely. And they're motivated by earning profits. So why in a command system, there's no competition because they believe it brings out the worst in people. Com our capitalists believe it brings out the best in people. So they encourage people to compete. And people are driven by self-interest, by profit. You could say it's greed. But uh, uh, the, the theory behind capitalism is, is if I go out and I pursue my own self-interest, that the whole society benefits. And uh, the United States definitely tilts toward uh, market economics, and our economy has been very productive as a result. It's an extremely productive system. Um, and what they produce in a, in a market economy is whatever the consumer wants, what the consumer demands. And there is no control from the government. People operate freely. If, if I sense that you want an iPod, an iPhone 7, I'll go out and make it. That's the whole concept. Private property, competition, make whatever the consumer wants. But in reality, every system in the world, including China's economic system and America's economic system, is a mixed bag. So it's like a mixed economic system. I mean, here's a good example. You guys go to uh, work at McDonald's next year. There's such a thing called a minimum wage. If we lived in pure capitalism, there'd be no such thing as a minimum wage. The government would never dictate to companies uh, how much they can pay their workers. Uh, in uh, China, there are, there are lots of people who are who have private property and who are very competitive. China is an extremely competitive place. So China is command and name only. It's a mixed economic system. And the United States is uh, a market system. Sorry for that little Skype message down there. That'll disappear. Sorry about that. OK, now, it's time to apply what we've learned. What I'd like you to do is take uh, the four systems that I talked about and answer these questions. Who, what, and how for each one of them. Once you're done, we'll talk about it. Good job, people.